Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. Shall we start now? Sure, sir. Okay. Uh, good afternoon to all. Uh, today's our uh, guest, Mr. Uh, Advocate Swapnik Gawande, sir. He is the director of BLI Cons uh, Consultancy Private Limited. He is a former adjunct professor at IBSS Rajendra Gode Engineering College. And he is a registered patent, trademark, and consultant, certified QMS leader, and auditor. He is working as patent and trademark consultant for more than 100 educational or industrial organizations. He is a patent consultant for Sun Gadge Baba Amravat University, Gondwana University, Galgotia University, Rajasthan Vidyapit, and other institutes. So he has a lot of experience in filing patent uh, and uh, intellectual property right related activities. So I warm welcome from on behalf of the Engineering College of Engineering Technology Aurangabad. So Pneel, sir. So I, we can start this session. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes. Uh, is my screen visible, sir? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. So, visible. Uh, and very good afternoon to everybody. Uh, the session which I will be taking today is on intellectual property rights, and more specifically, we will be talking about whatever inventions we do in our day-to-day -day life or in our uh, working work routine. How exactly we must uh, work on those inventions, as well as to protect those inventions, and how to commercialize those inventions. So these are the three stages in which every invention lives. Before moving towards that, first of all, there is a very famous uh, phrase of George Billings. What he says, necessity is the mother of invention, but IP right is the father. Uh, why George Billings said this? Because there are numerous inventions or numerous ideas which always comes in our mind. Even in our day-to-day -day routine, when we talk about human mind, it is said that around 40,000 thoughts come across each and every person every day. Of them, 98% thoughts are repetitive thoughts. But you can imagine every day there are 2% thoughts which are new one and its total goes to around 800. So issue arises when so many thoughts or ideas come in every person's mind, how many of them are actually legally protected by us so that those thoughts or those ideas become our property so that no other person can use our property. And to understand that part, first of all, we need to understand what exactly is meant by property. When we talk about the term property, in our legal term, it is said that the right to use and abuse one's own within limit of law. But in simple word, whatever thing is there, if you are claiming that this thing belongs to me, that means you are claiming that this is my property. This property is basically of two types. One is tangible form of property and other is intangible or invisible form of property. In simple words, if we need to understand the difference between tangible and intangible form of property, you can take an example of a simple book. If I go to a shop and I purchase this book, price of this book is 220 rupees. I will purchase this book. Once I come home, I realize that I don't want this book. There is a Radhiwala passing by. I call him and ask him to purchase this book from me. An hour before, I have paid 220 rupees to purchase this book. What price that Raddiwala will be paying me? That Raddiwala will be paying me hardly 50 paisa or 1 rupee. Now, issue arises what exactly happened in this half hour or 30 minutes that the 220 rupee book's price was crashed down to 50 paisa? Actually, issue is not in relation to that book. Issue is that property is same but two people are looking at same property in different way. When I purchased this book, bookshop owner was not having a weighing machine. He didn't sold me that book or I didn't purchase that book based on its weight or material from which that book is made. But the Radhiwala who is purchasing that book, he is purely purchasing that book based on its tangible form. That is what exactly is weight of that book. So that type of property is called as tangible form of property, a type of property which you just by seeing at that, you can estimate what might be price of that thing. 
but when i purchased that book i was looking at the knowledge which the author of that book is having and for that knowledge i paid 220 times more money compared to its tangible form so that 220 times increase in that book happened only because the author who was having some kind of knowledge which is although not visible to that raddi wala but i can sense that knowledge and based on that knowledge i purchased that book and that type of property is called as intangible or invisible type of property and when we are talking about intellectual property intellectual property is part of intangible form of property about which we will be discussing uh, discussing in today's session so what exactly is meant by intellectual property when we talk about intellectual property intellectual property in simple words means any property which you create using your intellect or using your brain all such kind of properties are called as intellectual property this intellectual property when we talk about this intellectual property first of all we need to understand what mistake many times we make at the time of understanding this concept of intellectual property the primary or most basic mistake which is made by every academician in relation to estimation of intellectual property is that whenever we are working on any research paper whenever we are working on any project or doing our phd or doing our mtech thesis what exactly is in our mind primarily in our mind is a thing that we will prepare a project report and we will publish a research paper now we need to understand what exactly will happen when i am publishing a research paper or when i am filing a patent application the basic both the things are ultimately intellectual properties only but when i am talking about a research paper and a patent publication the basic difference between these two types of intellectual property is that whenever you publish a research paper you receive an agreement from that publication house and what that agreement says or that the, the, the what undertaking they ask you they ask you the, about the undertaking that the copyright relating to this research work will belong to that organization that means whenever you are publishing a research paper you are getting protection only on the way in which you have written that research paper and that is called as copyright your invention under no way under no circumstances get any kind of protection by way of publication of your research paper if you wish to protect your invention or your idea if you think that i am not an arts teacher or i am not a art student to have a, written a research paper in a attractive language in that case if you think that the work on which i have the, the, the thing on which or invention on which i have worked that invention is also worth to be protected on my name in that case the option which we have is to file a patent application your research paper will never protect that invention on your name so that is the first step if you need to in if in future if you need to commercialize your invention or gain some kind of benefit from your invention that can be academic that can be commercial or that can be of any aspect first of all we need to understand what kind of protection i must take if i actually want to protect that work on my name in that case whenever we are talking about our invention in that case we need to understand what are different types of intellectual property so when we are talking about intellectual property nowadays what has happened nowadays everyone is running behind patents but when we are talking about today's session about commercialization of your invention commercialization do not run in a single way if you are really serious about your invention about protecting your invention or about commercializing your invention first of all we need to understand what are the different ways or different aspects in which i need to protect my invention until and unless you are protecting your invention into multiple aspects your invention will never generate the actual revenue or actual benefits which you actually deserve in relation to your work on which you are working so we, first of all we need to understand what are different types of intellectual property so intellectual property is basically divided in two types one is industrial property and other is called as artistic work this industrial property is again having different types of intellectual property like patent trademark industrial design geographical indication 
and an artistic work only one type of intellectual property is there and that intellectual property is called as copyright so what exactly are these different types of intellectual property first intellectual property is patent patent in simple words means if you have invented something if you have conducted any any conducted any kind of research and if you think that your work is really worth or useful in that case you can protect your invention by the filing of patent application so when we talk about invention and protecting your invention inventions are protected by way of filing of patent application you can take a simple example of mineral water bottle if you have seen manik chand aquas oxy rich mineral water bottle on that oxyrich bottle it is written added oxygen that word will not be visible on any other bottle only oxyrich writes added oxygen why only oxyrich is writing that because if you read that bottle on that bottle it is written patent protected technology that means manik chand aqua is claiming that we have invented a technology with the help of which oxygen content in water can be increased and that technology is protected by them by way of filing of patent application so if you are having any kind of invention and if you wish to protect your invention the way in which inventions can be protected is by way of filing of patent application another type of intellectual property is trademark trademark in simple word protects the identifier or source or origin of goods or services like if i am running a local firm software consultancy there is also other consultancy tcs and wipro tcs wipro infosys there are other firms also and i am also having a firm swapnil consultancies which firm you will prefer you will obviously prefer tcs wipro or the infosys rather than my firm if there is not a huge cost difference or cost constraint in your mind why will you select that because those firms have created their brand name and when i say infosys immediately name of a company comes in your mind who is having some kind of reputation and that reputation is based on the name which they have placed for their firm that is infosys if you wish to protect the name or identification mark based on which customer will be identifying what exactly is source or origin of goods or services all those identification marks are protected by way of filing of trademark application third type of intellectual property is industrial design industrial design in simple word means many time we work on different technologies or many time we create different machineries or different tools but many time it is that aesthetically they look very attractive or they look different but they are not having any technical advancement or technical advantage like if i take an example of two chairs so these two chairs may look different but ultimately you will be sitting on those chairs if you have not made any the technical differences in those chairs but still when you are making a different looking chair in that case you will obviously be expecting that the shape which i have designed to through my mind that shape must be protected similarly we can take example of this pen stand when you look at this pen stand this pen stand is having a different or unique shape and the shape of this pen stand is protected under industrial design act so whenever you are working on any product or machinery or technology in which the product which you are making that product looks different compared to existing products by shape structure or ornamentation in that case the looks or shape of those products are protected by way of industrial design application and this industrial design application is applicable almost everywhere you take two cell phones both cell phones are having different look you take two bikes two cars all those bikes or cars are always having different looks why they are having different looks because all those shape structures and configurations are protected by those companies under industrial design act another type of intellectual property is geographical indication geographical indication basically means if any product is famous because of its geography that product is protected under geographical indication like nashik grapes kolhapuri chappal solapuri chaddar nagpur oranges puneri pakdi all these products are protected under geographical indication mahabaleshwar strawberry it is also protected under geographical indication so that only people who are manufacturing that product in that specific geography 
only those people can sell that product with that geography's name so that is another type of intellectual property geographical indication and next comes copyright copyright in simple word means if you are making any chart any drawing if you are writing any research paper you are writing any book poem or musical composition if you are making any video all these things are protected by the copyright application so these are different types of intellectual property but what exactly is most important thing if you are seriously looking about your invention from commercial aspect you must never restrict your invention in a single aspect of intellectual property you must always try to understand what will be the different facets or aspects in which i can protect my invention so that commercial value of my invention will increase we can take a simple example for that how ip can play a very significant role in value addition for any product for that purpose we have taken an example of a water bottle whose name is evian what exactly this evian is after this session you can go on any online site and see for evian bottle the difference is distillery is available aquafina is available at the price of 20 rupees per liter but if you wish to purchase evian price of evian starts from 650 rupees for 500 ml so approximately 1300 rupees liter that is starting price or basic price of evian bottle it can go to 8000 rupees per liter now issue arises why a person will be paying 4000 8000 for normal water if it is available if this companies or reputed companies like distillery and aquafina are selling same water at the price of 20 rupees actual reason which is there for this evian are multiple intellectual properties which are hidden in this bottle the first intellectual property is brand evian itself brand evian is protected in 170 countries globally so that wherever in the world i travel i will be 100% assured that the bottle which i am getting is from original bottle from evian company only so that is first intellectual property that is evian another intellectual property in this bottle is that you look at the shapes of this bottle if you look at bisleri or aquafina you will always observe that shape of those bottle is always standard which you have you have purchased 5 years or 10 years back only one difference bisleri had made in that 250 ml pet bottle which is protected by them under industrial design act and hence you will never find that dew shape bottle of any other company because that unique dew shape is protected by bisleri under industrial design act but when we look at evian you look at the different shapes evian is always having different unique shape and this unique shapes of evian bottle are protected under industrial design act so that no other company can copy this shapes another intellectual property in this evian bottle is patent now how patent can come in this bottle patent is not in water patent is in the packaging in which this water is stored evian is stored in 100% decomposable polyethylene material which is patent of evian so that whenever i am purchasing a bottle of evian i am 100% assured that these bottles are 100% environmental friendly and they are 100% decomposable uh, made from 100% decomposable polyethylene material so that exactly is a patent which is involved in this bottle of evian another intellectual property is copyright the designs which you are looking on those bottle you look at those designs you will find that there are multiple designs on this bottle in some on some bottle you will find mountains are carved on some bottle you will see an eye on which a different uh, type evian is written on another bottle different design is made on another bottle just bubbles are made but the designs which are made on this bottle evian hires world's renowned designers and they by hiring those designers they create a special edition design for their bottles and they sell those bottles in market with that specific design with the name of that designer so that whenever this bottle is empty even after that it becomes an collectible item based on the name of that designer so that is another intellectual property which is hidden in the bottle of evia that is the, the the copyright another intellectual property is geographical indication what geographical indication is there if i purchase bisleri in amravati and i purchase bisleri in aurangabad both the times water will change because in amravati bisleri water will come from nagpur bottling plant and in aurangabad it will come from aurangabad bottling plant but when i am purchasing evian in nagpur 
Mumbai, Delhi, even in Tokyo or USA, anywhere in the world, whenever I'm purchasing EVM, my water will never get because the water which is stored in EVM, that water comes from a specific stream which is located in Alps mountain ranges in Italy. And that stream is, uh, is protected by EVM by the filing of geographical indication due to specific qualities in that water. So that water comes to me wherever in the world I travel. So another intellectual property is geographical indication. And when we merge these multiple intellectual properties in bottle of EVM, what happens? Your price of that water increases from 20 rupees to 1300 rupees. That exactly is power of multi merging of multiple intellectual properties in your product or your invention. And hence, whenever you are looking at your invention, you must not look at your invention in a single way or single facet. You must always try to understand what are the different facets in which my invention can get protected and how I can generate multiple intellectual property rights in my invention so that the value of my invention or value of my technology will increase. So that exactly is about invention. Now we need to understand where exactly India stands in this aspect of intellectual property. Because we, whenever we are talking about IIC or NBA accreditation or MAC, everywhere what they are asking, what exactly is patent portfolio of your institute? Or what exactly is patent portfolio of faculties of your institute? What research work your faculties have done? Have they filed patent application? Have your students filed patent applications? How many number of patent applications students of your institute have filed? Why these organizations are asking this? The reason lies behind the number of patent files globally and number of patents filed by Indians in India or globally. In that scenario, we will take uh, the chart of 2009. In 2009, world's number one patent filer was USA, who had filed 4,70,000 patent applications. On number two was Japan, who had filed around 4 lakh patent applications. And number three was China, who had filed 2,30,000 patent applications. Whereas where India was standing, number of patent filings in India in 2009 was 28,914. When USA was filing around 4,50,000 patent applications, Japan was filing 4 lakh applications, China was filing 2,30,000 patent applications. India filed only 29,000 patent applications. And even of the, those 28,940 patent applications, 82% of patent applications were filed by foreign nationals and multinationals. So Indians in India were filing only 18% of patent applications. So what has changed now? If we see the scenario of global IP activity in 2017, we will find that in 2017, total 3.2 million, that means 32 lakh patent applications were filed globally in 2017. Of those 32 lakh patent applications, there were, uh, there were 32 lakh patent applications, 1.8 million utility model applications, 12.4 million trademark applications, and 1.2 million industrial design applications. These were total patent applications, uh, the, the different intellectual property rights, filed in 2017 all over the world. Of those intellectual property rights, where exactly the, the different countries are standing, if we look at the chart, what exactly has changed from 2009 to 2017, you look at growth and development of China, where China was standing in 2000, where China was standing in 2009, and where China is standing today. You will observe, in 2000, there was not much difference between India and China. The, at that time, China realized that we need to seriously work on our IP portfolio. And what they did in 2009, they filed around 2,20,000 patent applications. Whereas five years back, they were filing around 40,000 patent applications. And now, when, when you are seeing the rapid growth of China, where it is challenging USA also, why China is challenging USA? You just look at the number of IP filings. In 2017, China filed 13,81,000 patent applications. USA filed 6,6,000, that means not even 50% of patent applications which China filed. That was a drastic difference. In 2009, country who was filing 2,20,000 patent applications moved to 13,81,000 patent applications just in 8 years. 
and USA moved from 5 lakh 20 thousand to 6 lakh 6 thousand. So there was increase. And where is India standing in 2017? If you look at the global chart, China, USA, Japan, Korea, EPO, Germany, and then stands India. Where India is standing, we moved from 28 thousand patent applications to 46 thousand patent applications. So that exactly is a huge gap which has been created between other countries and India. Even today, according to last year's statistics, we filed only 80,000 patent applications. So we have not even touched 1 lakh mark, whereas China has moved from, uh, from 40,000 to 13 lakh 81,000 uh, mark in just uh, this such a short span. So that exactly is the reason why Indian government as well as academic and industrial agencies are also tiresomely pressurizing every institute and industry to increase their IP portfolio or to increase the number of patent applications which they are filing. For that purpose, first of all, we need to understand is patenting such a difficult task? Because many times it comes in our mind that these countries might be providing different facilities and infrastructure. That is why they might be filing the, so many patent applications. Why India is not able to file that many patent applications? So obviously we are having uh, quite common or naive reasons that IP is a very different thing. We are not getting that those fundings or we are not having that kind of infrastructure. Even when we ask our superiors, they say, Are go for research paper. Patenting is a very difficult task. Actually, it's not that thing. When we look at patent, first of all, we need to understand what exactly are the things which can be patented. Because many times what happens, we look at these inventions who create huge hype. Like few of the inventions are marked here who created huge hype in past five years. One was a patent application of Apple that was self-deploying screen protector. That means whenever my phone falls down, automatically a sensor will identify what will be the point of contact of my phone with ground. And at that point of contact, they will activate a screen protector so that under no circumstances, my phone will ever get damaged. Another patent application is super drone for online delivery. That is patent application of Amazon, where whenever you will be ordering through AI, it will be identified what is the nearest location of that product. It will be packed there autonomously or automatically, and a drone will deliver that product to your at your doorstep. That is a patent application of Amazon. Another are robotic bees that are artificial bees who can perform the function of pollination. That is a patent application of Walmart. So these are different types of patent application or high-tech technologies which have created a huge hype. But we need to understand how many of these technologies are actually available in market or you are looking at those technologies actually in market. But when we see at some different inventions, like the image which you are seeing, this image has been taken from a patent application which was filed by J.B. Friedman. What exactly this patent application is? What Friedman did when he went to a juice shop, his three years old daughter was not comfortable to drink juice from glass because the uh, straw was straight. So Friedman imagined if this straw can be folded, how convenient it will be. And Friedman filed a patent application in 1948 for a foldable straw. And what happened? Even that patent got expired in 68 because life of patent is only for 20 years. Even today, the company who purchased this patent application from J.B. Friedman, 40% of foldable straws manufactured globally are manufactured by that single company. That exactly is power of patenting. Similarly, if you look at other invention, like this image, most of you have seen that uh, the, the, there are some weeds which are stuck in hair of a dog. But when we look at those weeds, there was a person, inventor, whose name was George D. Menstrol. When George D. Menstrol went with his, with his dog for a morning walk, and he realized that some beads are stuck in his dog's hair. What he did, he was curious that how these beads are so firmly stuck in his hair. So what Mr. Menstrel did, he cut down those hair and saw it under microscope and he saw this image. And he realized that when soft hair come in contact with those hard structure of that weed, they tie with each other and act as a hook. And immediately what Mr. Menstrel invented and patented, that thing was Velcro. So it is not at all necessary that whatever thing you are doing, that technology must be a sci-fi technology. The more simpler your invention is, there is a more probability of getting a commercial success for your invention. So always keep in mind, 
research paper and patent application these are although this both these things work on research but ultimately these two things look at a research in completely different aspect these two things stand at two ends whenever you are publishing a research paper it will always be analyzed what you have achieved technically or what exactly has been technically achieved because of your research but when you are filing a patent application patent application is not at all interested in technicalities patent application is interested in what how exactly you have simplified life of people or life of any living thing because of your invention and that thing is protected by the patent application in case of patent application patent office is purely interested that what solution you are providing for any problem nothing more than that so that exactly is the difference between research paper and patent application and that we need to consider another thing is that we always need to keep in mind the process of invention never stops many times people say that i was working on a thing but that has been done by one person now that now nothing can be done that never happens if even if you look at a simple invention of paper clip you will identify more than 150 patent applications on that simple paper clip or even if you take another example which is a very interesting example of pin opener basically when people were traveling from european countries to asian countries and african countries in 1810 they realized that storing of food is very difficult task so what happened there was peter durand who invented a storage container where you can in which you can store the food and whenever you need that you can break that uh, uh, the seal of that container and you can take those food stuffs outside so that container for storing food was invented in 1810 by peter durand but he forgot to invent what exactly is a way in which this container can be opened he invented that container but the way in which that container can be opened was not invented by him and it took more than 45 years to invent till the span of 45 years people used to place gun powder on that container and they used to blast that uh, that uh, that container opening with gun powder to tear apart the opening so this was a way which was used from 1810 to 1855 in 1855 robert yates invented claw shaped wooden uh, claw shaped wooden handle with blades so that you can tear apart the the, the opener the upper portion of that container using that thin blade which was placed on a wooden handle and this invention continued from 1855 till 1931 means almost around 80 years this invention continued and after that after 80 years what happened electric can openers were invented by preston west Preston West invented electric can opener so that you can keep that container in that opener and that electric can opener will will tear apart the upper portion. So that was invented in 1931, and that was that that invention worked from 1931 to 1942. During Second World War, U.S. government faced difficulty to provide those containers along with electric can openers to their soldiers so that their soldiers can use those containers in war. So what they did. they invented another hinge the uh, about the image which you can see the here this uh, this hinge was uh, with with triangular blade was invented by us defense organization to open that container and or tear apart the opening of that container it was invented by us defense department in 1942 and this continued till 1969 so a pin was invented in 1810 and it is in uh, and after that uh, even after various development actual invention came after 159 years that is in 1969 where armel fraze invented an thing accidentally how armel fraze invented armel fraze invented took some pins and went uh, went with his friend on a picnic there they realized that they have not brought pin openers and so they uh, they had to use the the bumper of their car to break those pins at that time mr fraz realized why i cannot why can't we give a mechanism so that without pin opener we can open those pins and what he invented he invented this thing so to place a opener on that pin itself 
and this technology was invented in 1969 so it took around 159 years to reach to this technology and even there can be some new person who might invent something more new so that exactly is a thing invention never ends it's always a process a work in progress and this process always continues you take any technology you take any invention conduct a search of that in, that invention on google patent you will find multiple inventions on that technology there is only one technology in in the world on which no development has been made and that technology is a rubber band the patent of rubber band was filed in 1840 and we are using the same rubber band which was filed in 1840 apart from that there is no other invention on which you will not find any modifications or a new technology emerging from that invention so invention is always a coming process an emerging process and we need to understand what exactly this patent is whenever we talk about patent patent in simple words means patent is nothing but an agreement between you and government in this agreement what exactly happens in this agreement you enter into an agreement with government and you claim that i am having a trade secret which no one else in the world knows and i am ready to teach my trade secret to society but why will i be teaching my trade secret why will i lose my trade trade secret for teaching my trade secret government provides me a monopoly for a span of 20 years so that whatever i have invented no other person or industry can either manufacture or import or sell that product in a country in which i have filed a patent application so that exactly is power of patenting and when we talk about any invention that i have filed a patent application that means when you say that this patent is granted to me that means i am having a 20 years monopoly on that technology that exactly is the power which patent provides to you now to file a patent application what exactly is required in simple words if you wish to file a patent application you must have an invention that invention in simple word means any new product or any new process which involves novelty inventive step and capable of industrial application all these things are patentable so what you need either you must have product or a process and that product or process must have three qualities novelty inventive step and industrial application so what exactly is first quality of novelty as said earlier many times what happens we we work on an invention and we publish a research paper in relation to that invention whenever you are publishing a research paper in relation to that invention that means you yourself are breaking novelty of your invention and your invention will become non patentable so always keep in mind what we have discussed in definition of patenting patent is an agreement between you and government where you are claiming i am having a trade secret which i am ready to teach to society if you yourself have brought that technology in public domain or if some other person sitting anywhere in the world have already invented that invention in that case that invention will never hold novelty and criteria of novelty of that invention will be breached and that invention will be non patentable so it's a first criteria that is novelty of your invention second criteria is inventive step inventive step in simple words means your invention must at least have one of these two qualities one is either your invention must achieve some kind of technical advance over existing technology or your invention must reduce the cost of existing technology like if i am filing a patent application on this bottle what this bottle is saying <coughs> this bottle can convert water into alkaline water and it can increase oxygen in this water so when i am i have invented something i am adding something in this bottle that technology i can protect by way of patent application if this thing is not available before or another thing what i must have this qualities which are mentioned on this bottle normally it is available in kangen water and cost of that machinery goes around 2 lakh 3 lakh and this bottle is sold at the price of 500 rupees so what is happening i am reducing cost of technology so in any of the scenario either you are achieving something technical or you are reducing cost of the technology you can file a patent application so one of these two qualities must be there and another criteria of inventive step is that non obviousness 
whenever a person who is technical expert in your field reads your patent application at least a slight strike has to be created on that person's mind that you have done something different and that creating that strike is called as non obviousness of your invention so to file a patent application what i must have i must have an invention my invention must have three qualities novelty inventive step and industrial applicability industrial applicability in simple words means that my invention is not a useless invention there must be at least some use to my invention and another thing my invention is not just a hypothetical concept it can be actually manufactured that is the criteria of industrial applicability so these are the three things which must be there in your invention if you wish to file patent application apart from that there are few other exceptions uh, in relation to the, uh, there are few other exceptions which are covered under uh, which are covered under section 3 of patent act like you cannot file patent application for any frivolous technology of, uh, of those technologies only one section is very troublesome for indians that is section 3k because section 3k of indian patent act says any mathematical method any business method any computer program or algorithm is non patentable so these four things are kept out of ambit of patent law under section 3k of patent act if you wish to file the if you wish to protect your computer program or algorithm or mathematical equation in that case we need to protect that by way of filing of copyright application it will not be protected by way of patent application so that uh, that is a trouble sub section apart from that now how we must proceed for patenting of our invention or proceed for protecting our invention what normally happens we take a project for a research work we start working on that project after 6 months one year we complete uh, after 6 months one year we complete that project and when and when we complete that project what exactly happens after completion of that project we someone says that okay now we must file a patent you must file a patent application you hire an attorney attorney conducts a patentability search and he shows you two three patent applications that this invention is already uh, been done so your whole efforts go waste because of that and many time we have seen that a person is doing his phd After, at the stage of completion he comes to us and we give him five six uh, research uh, five six patent applications which are even advanced that is invention which were done four five years back only so what happens your whole research work your whole efforts are jeopardized so there is a way in which research must be conducted whenever any project or idea comes in my mind my stage one must always be conducting a patentability search you don't need assistance of anyone you can conduct patentability search on your own uh, also what you must do go on patents.google.com or freepatentsonline.com go on this search engine conduct a patentability search when you will be conducting a patentability search about any idea which has came in your mind you will get a clear picture what exactly has been done till date and then you need to identify what part is missing and you only need to take effort on that missing part so that probability of grant of your patent will also increase as well as the quality of your your research will also significantly increase so this is a way in which you can conduct patentability search so these are different types of patent application in different forms which are required but we will not go on this forms and requirement as our today's topic is slightly different we will move towards technology commercialization when we talk about this technology commercialization in this technology commercialization first of all we need to understand how to commercialize the technology to commercialize the technology first of all we need to understand to identify the ip involved in that technology many time people say i have an invention i have filed one patent application and i want to commercialize that patent application patent commercialization do not work in this way single patent application probability of commercialization of single patent application is comparatively very 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 low if you are looking at commercializing an invention because what exactly happens you look even at companies you will observe that on a single technology those companies will be filing 7 8 10 15 patent applications in order to protect that whole technology not only the idea which has came in your mind 
if you are just restricting yourself to that idea itself commercializing that idea becomes for a slight really difficult also you must not look at that idea only from patenting point of view like if i am looking at this bottle i am protecting this bottle although the technology have developed something for which i am filing a patent application but by adding of this thing the shape of this bottle is also changing so i will plan to protect shape of this bottle under industrial design act then i will look what other intellectual properties are involved and one one will be patent then i'll be filing industrial design application if there is a, any other thing there is any some unique thing which i am writing on that i will protect that writing by the filing of corporate application so what i will be doing i will be protecting my invention from multiple facets apart from that protecting your invention in ip is not the only thing which we do at the at the time of commercializing of our invention when we file a patent application for any industry our task is not only to file patent application our other task is also to identify what part can be kept hidden which we do not need to disclose in our patent application or which other person cannot identify until and unless we help that person to identify that thing so in that case we also need to understand at the time of uh, looking at your invention from commercial point of view we need to understand what part we must uh, protect by way of filing of patent application and what part we must hide the, so that no other person will get access to that part and we will keep that part of our, as our trade secret so from that aspect also we need to understand when we are looking at commercializing our invention another thing which comes is that creating your ip pool why i am talking about creating your ip pool many times what happens we take a project uh, students come to us we give them a project after 6 months their project is complete that batch goes another batch comes again we give them a new project in that case what exactly happens everyone works on a different project and from institute point of view a ip pool is not created so when you are working in an institute or organization a new concept has emerged and that concept is creating an ip pool in ip pool what exactly happens we take five groups and we give a single project to all these five groups if i am talking about this bottle we will give uh, the make a manufacturing of this bottle project to all these five groups and these five groups need to think on this project in a different manner so these five groups will try to reach at a solution in five different ways and all these five different ways will be protected by the filing of patent application when next year next batch will come this database will be available to those students they will identify what previously uh, previous their seniors have done and they will try to make modification in that and those modifications will again get protected by the filing of patent application in this way you will be having a ip pool for single technology so that if any person tries to infringe that invention in any manner in one way or other he will be infringing your intellectual property pool which you have created for your estate in this way ip pool is created and you can and the, the the chances of commercialization of your invention increases manifold because you are not talking with an industry for a single patent application you will be saying on this single technology we are having 5 7 8 patent applications and we need to commercialize this whole bulk so that advantage is provided by creating ip pool for educational institutes and and organizations another aspect is that have you correctly filed your patent application many time we work on very interesting research work many time our research work is very interesting and very worthy but the way in which we have filed our patent application we completely destroy the protection or ambit of our invention that is why it must always be kept in mind our patent application which we file at patent office your patent application is not a technical research paper patent application is a techno legal document it's related to technology also and it's related to law also so it's a techno legal document there is a legal way in which you need to disclose the technical facts of your invention in that ambit and that will decide what exactly part will be protected and how exactly a fence will be created around your invention so that if any person infringes that fence that fence he can be prosecuted or he can be stopped 
and that is why filing of patent application is very important without that commercializing and technology just by saying that this patent is granted to me that's not possible another thing that comes is when we say that product development is a continuously involving process we can give an example like one of our client started working on rotary internal combustion engine in 2010 so we filed a patent application on that rotary ic engine in 2010 in 2011 he realized that i have made some modifications in that ic engine so again for those modifications we again filed another patent application in 2014 again he made some modifications in 2014 again we filed patent application after that also we filed two other patent applications so on a single technology for every modification which were going on we used to file patent application and the number of patent application on that single technology today stands to six so that what exactly is happening whenever any new thing is in, uh, is evolving we are filing a patent application on that new part so that we are creating a technology pool and whatever in our process of continuation whatever technology is advancing we are making those advancements and we are protecting those advancements on our name without that what will happen if, if the inventor has said in 2010 i have filed a patent application i will not do anything until and unless that 2010 technology gets commercialized in that case you will never have a technology pool or the probability of getting success in that invention will diminish and that is why whenever you are working on a technology you must always keep on continuing to work on that technology and whenever you are making any modification you must keep on filing patent application on those modifications also so that you protect your invention in a proper way and in an advanced way another thing is how to identify a potential buyer this is very important and tricky task that many times academically we file a patent application it's it gets granted also and then we think that i need to commercialize my invention so first of all don't wait till grant of your patent application if you are serious about commercializing your invention reason behind that is that patent is a natural right when you file a patent application in india your invention is protected only in india if you wish to protect your invention outside india the steps are to be taken within one year of filing of your patent application if you are waiting till grant of your patent application after that many times what happens after that you approach some industries and that industry says that we are not interested in the indian market we are interested in china market or european market or us market you need to understand hero motors or bajaj auto never manufacture side stands or speedometers what they do they only purchase those things from vendors so first of all identifying a proper person whether that thing is manufactured by manufacturer himself or through vendors that is very important to identify the customer and after that starting to start the process of commercialization Next is identifying manufacturer. Next is identifying point of contact of organization. If I have I have I have made a patent, if I have I have filed a patent application which is relating to automobile engineering, it is not necessary to write mails to Ratan Tata. What I must do, I must identify what exactly will be the most suitable point of contact. And suitable point of contact can be their R and D team, their design team. You need to identify or if they are if they are having an IP in the, the department, you need to identify the exact and accurate point of contact. Without that, the process of commercialization becomes very difficult. And the way in which you must initiate communication. There are different ways in which you can initiate communication. You can prepare flyers and circulate those flyers. You can write down a mail to those organizations what exactly you have done in what thing you are interested, what you are expecting from that organization. So there are multiple ways in which you can communicate with those organizations. After that, marketing and demonstrating our technology, that is also very important thing. Because ultimately what happens, the 
invention disclosed in your patent application is a research uh, part of your invention but when you are sending a proposal to any industry that will never be your patent application you can we can take a simple example of colgate vape shakti whatever content might be there in vape shakti or whatever technical process of, of manufacture is there for colgate vape shakti when they advertise they are not showing those technical contents in that advertisement because if they show those technical content the ad will become boring customer will not get attracted towards that ad so commercialization of patent is a marketing strategy you need to prepare attractive powerpoint presentation which can attract eyes of the manufacturer or marketing team of that organization you need to show what are advantages and uses not technicalities of that invention another thing whatever advantages your invention is providing to society industry is not at all interested in that part industry is interested you need to conduct a study because of your invention what advantage specifically that industry will be gaining whether they need to make significant changes in their line to make your product or not all that is making all those studies you need to prepare a proper presentation and after that move towards commercialization of your invention next part comes patent valuation patent valuation is also very important part because although you have filed a patent application and the patent is granted patent is a intangible form of property so you need to conduct a valuation of your patent to a neutral valuation agency what exactly can be market price of your invention they are having various algorithms marketing means and technologies based on that they will conduct patent valuation of your invention and based on that valuation they will decide whether your invention what exactly is price or value of your invention that can be decided by them and these exactly are the things as time is less uh, if you are having any question we can have discussion on uh, we can sir can we open dais for question and sir yes sir yes sir yes participants you can ask any question related to this uh, patent lab development technology sir uh, very good afternoon i am myself vilas patil yes sir uh, i have one question related with the you have given the example uh, related with the shape and size you can uh, do the changes and uh, file the patent on that so along with that when you make a changes definitely there is a curve and all these things will be come in picture sir. definitely no, no. you have to give the equations also for that curves no sir but i will tell you good thing uh, understand it in a simple manner uh, uh, i mean the, 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 uh, the answer for your question will be in two part just making curves on that invention that will qualify for industrial design not yes. for patent application until and unless you can prove that because of that curve some technical advance is getting achieved because in case of patent application we will have to provide novelty inventive step and industrial applicability so if because of that curve or if, the, if because of that change in design if some kind of technical advance or economical significance is getting achieved only in that case you can go for patent application that is first part another part is mathematical equations let me be clear patent application is not a research paper patent office is not at all interested in what mathematical equations are involved patent office is purely interested if i have manufactured this product what components are required to make this product how these components are assembled together and how this device is working what mathematical equations uh, are involved what scientific principles are involved because of which this device might be working patent office is not at all interested in that part so even if you are not having those mathematical equations you you can find that patent that patent application or even if you are having those mathematical equations normally we don't use those mathematical equations at the time of filing of patent application what patent office is primarily interested your device how that device is manufactured uh, the figure which is to be provided and it is not restricted to shape and size okay sir anything more sir uh, sir my question is a uh... Uh, related to the after uh, submission of uh, application uh, what are yes, the difference sir. what are the process which uh, um, is there uh, to uh, find the examination of patent ha uh, the process is that your stage one will be filing of patent application 
Once you file that patent application at patent office, after 18 months, your application gets published in patent journal. If you don't wish to wait for the span of 18 months, you are having option to file request to early publication, that is Form 9. If you file request to early publication, uh, your application will get published within one month. So you can reduce the time of publication of your patent application by 17 months by filing of request to early publication. After publication of your patent application, you need to request to patent office to start the process of examination. And that request is made by way of filing of Form 18. Now, new form has also came that is request to expedite examination that is Form 18A. But Form 18A is not available for everyone. Form 18A is only available for Startup India registered entities, female applicant and patent applications who have filed international patent application under Patent Cooperation Treaty designating India as international searching authority. That, that expedite examination is available only for them. In case once you file request to examination or expedite examination at patent office, after that, that application is examined by patent office. And after examination, first examination report is issued by patent office. Once patent office issues first examination report, within six months, you need to submit written reply for that examination report. That whatever objections they have raised, how you can overcome those obje objections. After submission of reply to that examination report, if patent office is satisfied, they will directly grant your patent application. If still they are not satisfied or still some objections are uh, left there, they will issue you a hearing notice. Then you need to attend hearing notice at patent, uh, and attend that hearing at patent office. And after and within 15 days of attending hearing, you need to submit your final reply. And based on that final reply, it will be decided that whether that patent will be accepted or it will be rejected. So this is a process in which your patent application proceeds at patent office. Yes, sir. Any other question? Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, my question is uh, for filing the patent. Uh, mm -hmm. The model should be ready for that or uh, only theoretically concept you can uh, file before getting uh, any that's result. Very yes. <laughs> that's very interesting question. Uh, let me tell you one thing. Even if you are not having what exactly patent act says, we will go by law first. Patent act says you need a model only if required by controller. Hardly in one in thousand applications, normally controller asks to show you a working model once in a thousand patent application and of those applications also 90 percent applications are those in which there is an objection under section 3a of patent act so that section 3a of patent act says that you are claiming something frivolous or against the basic principle of natural law if controller is having clear doubt that you are claiming something frivolous or you are claiming something which is practically not possible normally only in that case he will say okay show me the working model Apart from that, working model is not required. Another thing is that don't wait for construction of working model for filing of your patent application. Because as the story which I told you, the way which I told you before, in which your patent application will be proceeding, the actual point of contact with, with patent office will only come at the stage of hearing, that is final stage. Till then, you will not be enter, entering with patent office under any direct communication. So, uh, there is no need of any working model. So even if you are not having a working model, you can file a patent application. Only criteria is that your invention must be completely and properly disclosed on that patent application. By reading your patent application, I must get a clear idea about your invention. If I am getting clear idea by reading your patent application, there is no need of a working model. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, one one more question. Yeah. So, how much uh, journey time is uh, required for completing this uh, grant process? Uh, if you are filing request to early publication and expedite examination, in that case, not this process is completed in six to seven months. Uh, if there is expedite examination, in normal course, it takes around two to three years. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Is there any question from 
पार्टिसिपेंट्स है सर थैंक्स सर थैंक्स अलॉट फॉर बीइंग विद अस विद इन अ शॉर्ट टाइम और शॉर्ट नोटिस एंड ऑन द बिहाफ ऑफ श्री शिंजिंग कॉलेज आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक फॉर एनलाइटिंग अस रिगार्डिंग पेटेंट हाउ टू प्रोटेक्ट एंड व्हाट इज द पावर ऑफ द पेटेंट एंड द प्रोसेस इनोवेशन डेवलपमेंट एंड इन द टेक्नोलॉजी रेडीनेस एंड हाउ दिस वर्क शुड बी कमर्शियलाइज्ड विद लैब टेक्नोलॉजीज एंड हाउ टू ट्रांसफर द टेक्नोलॉजी सो thanks sir thanks for giving this uh, valuable information and joining with us uh, so i would like to thanks from our principal sir also and um, for giving this opportunity for this platform thanks sir swapnil gawande sir thanks sir so on uh, with the permission of principal sir i would like to say the session is over thanks thanks a lot Thank you. Thank you, everyone.